If I'm given the first of the month and I need to count how many Saturdays are in that month, I do not want to have to do it longhand, listing the dates and then one by one counting. I want to do it with a single cell formula. <laughs> Now, if you like formula solutions, this video is going to be a wild one. We're going to start by looking at a dynamic array solution, then to old school array formulas, and then the killer punch will be the two formulas at the end, one of which doesn't even have an array formula. The first thing we need to do is from the start date, generate all the days in the month. Now we're going to see two examples. In the first one, we're going to use one of the new Office 365 dynamic array functions. Sequence can create a sequence of numbers. Now the trick for us is going to be how many rows do we want? Well, we actually need to look at the particular month. If it's January, we need 31 rows or 31 dates. If it's February, we need 28. So we use the end of the month function to first get the serial number date. We have a start date, comma. Since it's this month, we want the end date. We type a 0, close parentheses. Now that'll give me a serial number date, and I actually want the number of days. So I say, hey, day, look at the end of the month. And of course, since it's the 31st, it'll report the 31st. So that's the number of rows, comma, columns. The default is 1, so comma. The start, well, that's the start, comma, and the step is one day. Close parentheses. Now, the new calculation engine in Office 365, if I were to hit Enter here, those are all the serial number dates without number formatting. Somewhere in there, there are some Saturdays. Now, this is not what we want, so I come back to the top cell. We actually need weekdays, 1 to 7. So we use the weekday function. Now, we're doing a function argument array operation because we're giving it a bunch of dates. So weekday will spit out a bunch of answers. Comma for the second argument, and here it is. We can pick whichever one we want. I want Saturday to be 7, so I'm putting a 1, close parentheses. Now if I hit Enter, oh, there's my Saturday, there's my Saturday. Back to the top cell, F2. I need to ask the question of that delivered array. How many of you are equal to 7? If I use the F9 key to evaluate instead of hitting Enter, we could see we have our trues, Control Z, to convert those trues and falses to ones and zeros. We can use any math operation. I'm going to use double negative because it tends to be faster when doing array formulas. Close parentheses, and now when I hit F9, I just need to add it to get all those ones. Control Z. I'm in Office 365, so I can use the sum function. Close parentheses, and now when I hit Enter, it delivers a single cell answer. This solution will work in any version. I'm going to say, hey, please start at the beginning of the month, and I'm going to join it in double quotes a colon. Now, if I F9 this, that seems odd. It's given me the start of the month serial number colon the end of the month serial number. Now, if that was a real reference, we could count how many rows. Control Z, well, that's text. So we use the indirect function. The indirect function takes any text that represents a reference and converts it to a reference. If I F9, oh, that is crazy big. It's actually showing you all of the values, which are empty cells from that huge range. Control Z. Now we come to the beginning, and we're going to use the row function. Close parentheses. And when I F9, there's all of the serial number dates for whatever month we type here. Control Z. Now we put it in weekday. Comma one close parentheses. F9 looks similar to the formula up here. Control Z. We definitely want to convert it to ones and zeros using double negative. And rather than using sum, we use sum product. Anytime you want to add the result of an array formula, you can use sum product. And it does not require Control Shift Enter. When I hit Enter, I get 124 F2. I forgot inside the parentheses to ask the important question, how many of you are equal to 7 and Enter? Now what's so cool about this is I can put any start of the month, and it will tell me how many Saturdays. Here's our bonus formula. Instead of using double negative, we can use the end function, which also converts trues and falses to the equivalent ones and zeros. 
Now, over the decades of using array formulas, double negative tends to be faster, but n is pretty close. OK, OK, I should have showed you this one from the beginning. Although these will work in any version, Excel 2010 or later, we have Network Days International. Now, it counts the work days, but we're going to use it to count Saturdays. Start date. There it is, comma, end date. Well, we'll use end of the month. We'll say end of the month, comma, zero to get the end of the current month. And now, comma, weekend. And this dropdown doesn't tell us what we want to do. I only want to count one day of the week. If I select Saturday down here, that's the day that we avoid. So there's a trick in this weekend argument. If in double quotes, you use starting at Monday, zeros and ones to represent the days you want to count and the days you do not want to count. Networking days will do the trick. Now, one means we do not want to count it starting at Monday. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Zero means we want to count it. That's Saturday. One is for Sunday and double quotes. We don't got to worry about holidays. And you got to be kidding me. That's a single cell simple formula when I hit Enter that does exactly what we want. All right, bonus formula number two. And this one's going to be the most fun of all. In weekend, instead of hard coding it, I want to select whatever day here and have it count. So in weekend, we're going to do an array calculation. There's Monday to Sunday. And guess what? Since those are never going to change, I'm going to come up here and convert it to an array constant with the F9 key. That means we're hard coding those into our formula. Now, this is array syntax. Curly brackets always house the array. Text is in double quotes. And semicolon means go down a row. Now we need to ask the question of that array constant. How many of you are equal to whatever I put there? Right now, if I highlight and hit the F9 key, trues and falses is not what networking days. Remember, it needs ones and zeros, Control Z. We can convert trues and falses to ones and zeros with any math operation. But double negative tends to be faster when we're working on array calculations. Now if I select that in F9, it looks like we have the correct pattern. Uh-oh, that's not the correct pattern because that needs to be 0. These need to be 1s, Control-Z. The comparative operator is actually not. So now when I select this in F9, I have the patterns of ones and zeros. But networking days can't deal with an array like this, so we have to convert it to a text string. Control Z. We can do it with the concat function, which will join it without a delimiter. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And if we select weekend and F9, that is amazing. Control Z and Enter. Now if I change this to Thursday, that's the only formula that will respond. All right, that was a bunch of fun with counting Saturdays and at the end, whatever day you put in the cell. Now if you want to learn more about dynamic array formulas, I have a great playlist with all sorts of videos. If you want to learn about traditional array formulas, I wrote the book Control-Shift-Enter, Mastering Excel Array Formulas. And all the videos for that book are free here at YouTube in this playlist.